Rachel. I am doing wonderful. It's so great to, to get to chat with you all. Thank you for letting me crash your party. <laughs> well, we're so glad you're a part of the party. So we'll just, without further ado, we're going to bring uh, the kids up to ask their questions. Okay, that sounds terrific. I can't wait. Hi, I'm Ashlyn Phillips. Uh, my question is, how do you prepare for home style living in zero gravity like that, especially emergencies? That's a great question, Ashlyn. Um, you know, I spent about two and a half years when I first started uh, at NASA just training, doing kind of the basic training to become an astronaut. And after that two and a half years, we were then eligible to be assigned to a mission. And once I got assigned to this mission, I spent another two and a half years training. And so during that two and a half years, we spent lots of time studying books, stu uh, spending time in the simulator, spent a lot of time traveling to all of our different international partner countries like Russia and Japan and Canada um, and Europe to train on all of their systems uh, as well. And so that's, that's really kind of how, how we train for the mission. Um, for emergencies, it's the same thing. We, we spend a lot of time preparing for emergencies so that if they happen, um, that we will be prepared and we know how to respond. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Adam Barrington. I saw pictures of you eating space lettuce. How did it taste? And what else are you growing? Thanks, Adam. It's great to talk to you. Um, that's a great question. That was a lot of fun getting to grow that lettuce because um, not only were we growing food that we could actually eat up here, but I think just the, the act of having um, of nurturing and, uh, and providing water to these plants every day was kind of psychologically beneficial. It was something that was a lot of fun for me to do, to check on the plants every day and to see how they were doing. Um, the, the, the lettuce actually tasted really good. I like salad, but it was really fun to eat fresh lettuce up here um, that we had grown ourselves. And uh, right now, unfortunately, we're not growing anything else, but I'm looking forward to, to maybe getting to grow some lettuce again uh, towards the end of my mission. Actually, what I'd really like to grow is a cheeseburger. <laughs> My name is Gigi. I was wondering if the food tastes different in space. Gigi, that's a really great uh, question. You know, um, a lot of people think, well, when we get into space, because, uh, because there's no gravity, a lot of the fluid um, that is in our legs kind of shifts up into our chest and into our head. And some people thought that that might change the way we perceive taste a little bit. I can tell you that my things taste fairly similar to me up here. But I like spicy foods because a lot of the food that we have up here, they, they tried to make it very healthy. And, and, and so that meant taking a lot of the salt out of it, which also decreased the flavor a little bit. So I use a lot of um, condiments, uh, spices, hot sauce, that sort of thing to make the, the, the food taste good. Because of that fluid shift, we say because the blood kind of shifts up into our chest and into our head, it tends to cause our nose to clog up a little bit, to feel congested, a little bit like you have a cold. And so you don't smell, um, you can't smell things quite as well. And I think that, you know, smell plays a, a large part in, in, uh, in the sense of taste. And because we can't smell things as well, I think that also changes taste just a little bit. Thanks, Gigi. Hi, I'm Anna Masiello, and I was wondering if when you sleep, do you float or tie yourself down? And how, and how um, do you know when it's morning or night? Great question. Um, so it kind of depends on the person and how they like to sleep. So we have sleeping bags in our crew quarters, and I brought mine out here to show you. And uh, so we just crawl into our sleeping bag and, um, and zip it up. And we even have holes on the side that we can stick our arms out if we want to. Now, some people like to tie this to their wall, tie this to the wall so it feels like 
there's pressure holding them back against the wall and it makes it feel a little bit like you're sleeping in a bed on the earth. I actually like to sleep floating. So I just tie um, one cord to the wall so I don't float away. Uh, and then I just let myself float in my crew quarters. And, and I find that to be very comfortable. Hi, my name is Abigail Megan. Where does the space station go? Please don't go on Jupiter and Neptune. They are made of gas and you'll sink. Thank you for that great question. Um, you're absolutely right. Neptune and Jupiter are, are gaseous planets and there's not a whole lot that uh, we would be able to walk around and explore on down there. Um, the, the International Space Station is actually flying about 220, 230 miles above the Earth and we're constantly orbiting the Earth and uh, so it's a beautiful, beautiful view and I actually just closed the hatch down here because the light was coming through but we can look through the windows and look, and look down and see um, the beautiful Earth going by um, and you all can go outside and actually watch the space station fly over. We look like a really bright star flying across the sky quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Okay, Ben. Okay. Can you say your name? Say I'm Say it louder. I'm Mrs. Say it right. Okay. And now ask your questions, astronaut child. Um, I am, I am Anthony. Oh, Anthony, if you like vegetables. Yeah, do you like vegetables? Can I ride on your rocket? Can you ride on your rocket? Okay. 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 Ethan, it's so great to hear your question. Thank you. Those are great questions. Um, we do have vegetables in space. So I, got, I grew that lettuce not too long ago, and we got to eat that. And I know that some of you really like broccoli, so I brought you some broccoli to look at. This is dehydrated broccoli. And so when we're ready to eat, we would um, put hot water into this, and it would, uh, then it would, it would uh, rehydrate, basically, and, and be hot. And then we would, we would cut that open and eat it. Um, we also have vegetables. Your parents will recognize this. We have vegetables and packages like this, and we just stick that into a food warmer. And this is green beans and potatoes. And then when we're really lucky, when we have friends coming up to visit us or we have our cargo vehicles, we can get fresh vegetables like onions and garlic are really good. Thank you for that. Oh, and you, if I, if I could do it, I would love for you to, to ride in that rocket. That is a really fun, um, it's a really fun ride. And so... If you, if you want to ride in a rocket someday, you've got to study really hard and uh, work real hard, study math or science, and uh, you'll get to ride in your own rocket someday. Hi, my name is Ben Goodman, and my question was, um, what's the coolest thing you've seen out your window? Hey, Ben, thank you so much for that, uh, for that question. You know, there's so many cool things to see when I'm looking, we're looking out the window. And actually, I'd like to show you, a, take a peek out the window here really quick. Um, the coolest thing that I've seen, though, is the aurora. And so I only got to see the aurora once when I was on Earth. And that was actually while we were flying in a plane. And I looked out the window and could see just like a little green streak. But up here, we get to see the aurora um, looking down. And it looks, it's, it's just beautiful. It's like neon green and purple. And it was slithering like a snake over the atmosphere. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, but real quick, let me see if I can just show you what we're flying over outside the window here so that you guys can see what it looks like outside. Hold on.
So right now we're flying over, um, looks like the northern Atlantic. And so you can see lots of clouds. And, and underneath those clouds, of course, is water. And so that's the other really striking thing uh, on being on the space station is just to see how much water there is on the Earth. It just, you know, anytime you look out the window, the chances are that you're going to be flying over uh, clouds and water. And so that makes it extra fun when you're flying over land to see uh, places that you recognize, like uh, the um, Gulf of Mexico and, and looking at uh, finding where my, my house is in, t in Houston or flying over the Rocky Mountains and seeing uh, the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Thank hey, Joe, you. this is Tara. That was a wicked awesome photo capture you had of our spirit mission. Hey, Chell, while you're getting your camera back, Tara wanted to say something to you. Can you hear us? He doesn't have his microphone. Oh, I can hear you. Yep, I sure can. I just want to say thanks to you all for the wicked awesome photo capture of our spirit mission. Are you kidding? That was, that was awesome. Um, that was so much fun to... To see that message, and I just uh, I can't tell you um, how cool that was. Uh, I know how much work that uh, you and and uh, so many of our classmates and cadets uh, put into that, getting up really early, um, and I think everybody really enjoyed that up here, looking down at the earth and finding this message that was for us. Uh, um, so thank you for doing that. That was awesome. Hi, Chell. Um, my name is Deuce, and the question I have to ask you is, have you met any new or interesting friends, including extraterrestrial friends? <laughs> hey, Deuce, thanks for that question. I haven't been asked that one yet. Um, you know what? Absolutely. And that's one of the great things about uh, this job. You know, every time you think about uh, flying in space or working for NASA, you really think about spaceships and space shuttles and rockets. But really, the, one of the coolest things is the people that you get to work with. Uh, at NASA, we have some of the smartest um, people that I've ever met and, uh, and nicest people that I've ever met. And so the opportunity to get to work with them on a daily basis uh, is, is really one of the most fun things about this job. Um, up here, we get to make new friends as well. Uh, we have three Russians that are in the Russian segment of the, segment of the space station. We just had a, um, an astronaut from Kazakhstan and an astronaut from uh, Denmark come up to visit, and they actually just left. Uh, we're actually their their um, capsule is leaving the space station probably as we speak right now, and uh, and of course my crewmates uh, here on the U.S. side of the space station, Japanese astronaut and uh, and my fellow uh, U.S. astronaut Scott Kelly. So. Uh, really get to make a lot of friends up here. I have not made any friends with extraterrestrials yet, though. Hi, Chell. My name is Shannon Bloom. How has being on the ISS changed your life and your view of life on Earth? Thank you, Shannon. It's uh, thank you for the question. You know, um, for one, this th for me this was a, this is really a dream come true. And so the opportunity to have worked really hard and uh, and and have uh, s some pretty good luck and and to have met uh, some really neat people along the way, and then to get to the point where. You, um, I've gotten to achieve this really a lifelong dream, a lifelong goal. That's uh, a, that's kind of life changing and um, has given me new perspective. The other thing is looking down at the Earth. I mean, you know, you hear about it a lot, but when we look down at the Earth, we don't see borders. You don't see um, labels on on each of the different countries, and it really gives you a perspective that this is one big spaceship, this big blue and white spaceship that we're living on, and that we need to really be instead of fighting each other, we need to be working together. And, uh, and, and protecting and preserving um, the spaceship that we live on. There goes Scott. <laughs> My name is 
Ellie, and my question is, do you have to wear a lot of sunscreen in space? Ellie, that's a great question. So um, our windows, most of our windows have a special coating on them so that we don't have to wear a sunscreen. But we have some scientific windows on the space station that do not have that coating. And so we, if we are ever in a, in a position where we can see the sun from those windows, we could actually get a sunburn very, very quickly. And so we have to be very careful about uh, being in those windows and being exposed to the sun. Um, for the most part, we don't have to wear sunscreen because we don't get exposed to the sun all that much. We're generally just looking at the ground. Uh, but we do get a higher radiation exposure. So and a radioactive particles from the sun and from, uh, from the cosmos um, are striking us at, at more of a, a little bit more than you do than you get on the ground because we have the protection of the atmosphere when you're living on Earth. Thanks for the question. You're welcome. Come on up, Eli. Come on up, bud. Eli, come on up, bud. Hi, my name is Eli McClinton, and what is the biggest difference in growing plants in space versus Earth, gravity, water, light, and soil? And do plants grow faster or slower Thank in space? Thank you, Eli. You know what? Um, it's pretty hard to grow things up here because we can't just use dirt. Everything has to be encapsulated or it's just going to fall, f kind of uh, float away. So we use special, we had these special um, pillows that were, that were filled with um, kind of a clay. And, and that's what we, in, and to give the plants water, we couldn't pour water onto it with a, with a watering um, with a, uh, a watering can, we actually had, I had to use syringes to inject water through tubes to get into this, uh, this clay pillow. Um, and the plants themselves kind of grew on this plastic foam. So it doesn't look very natural, but the plants were great. They, they were very healthy and they tasted great. Um, the light was actually a very special pink light, kind of a grow light to help the plants grow very quickly because of course we don't have sunlight uh, available within the area that the plants were being grown. So it looks, kind of like a very high-tech environment where the plants are growing. Um, and of course, that looks pretty different from what we have on Earth. I can't tell you if they grow faster or slower. I haven't seen, we, when we were growing the, the lettuce up here, um, there were scientists growing the exact same kind of lettuce under similar conditions on the ground. And I haven't heard the results of that experiment yet, but um, I will definitely try and find out and let you know. Hi, my name's Josiah. Um, I wanted to ask, where do you see the U.S. space program within the next decade? Do you think we'll be going uh, to the moon more or going to Mars? Josiah, thank you for that question. Um, so over the next decade, you know, I think it's going to be very exciting. So we have commercial companies like SpaceX and um, Boeing that are building uh, vehicles to fly astronauts to and from the space station. And we have private, other private companies like Virgin Galactic that are going to provide suborbital space flights um, for for commercial paying customers. So that's a really that's a, a whole new area of space flight, and uh, that may be the way that maybe my kids or some of you there today uh, will fly into space. Um, I think for, for NASA, we're still very interested in deep space exploration, and our ultimate goal is to get to Mars. And so what we're doing here on the space station today is really trying to figure out all the things that we need to figure out in order to have that, to be successful at that long duration space flight to Mars, to be able to recycle water, um, to clean our atmosphere, to, to provide food for ourselves, to protect ourselves from radiation. Um, that's a big part of what uh, what uh, Scott Kelly is doing with this one-year mission. Scott Kelly and uh, Mikhail Kornienko, uh, this one-year mission is really to look at some of those things that we need to do to be successful in, in, in getting to Mars. Hello, my name is Zane. I was going to ask how do you go 
to the bathroom. <laughs> I've heard that question before. The answer is very carefully. <laughs> so I can't take you to the bathroom, unfortunately. The, the, uh, the camera won't go all the way there, but I took a picture of it. And so this is what our toilet looks like. <laughs> so here, that's where we sit. And then there's a vacuum hose right here. So we use the hose, the vacuum hose for number one. And that toilet, we flip the lid up and that's where, where number two goes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kevin. What's the coolest experiment you're doing? The coolest experiment that I'm working on right now, and we have over 240 experiments that I'll be uh, participating over the course of my six month or my five month mission here. The coolest experiment that I'm working on right now is one called capillary beverage. And it's basically using these very special space cups um, that allow us to drink up here in, when, when there's no gravity. And it basically uses the shape of the cup to, and the curvature of the cup to draw the, um, to draw the fluid towards uh, your mouth. And so for me, I really like drinking coffee in those because I can smell the coffee while I'm drinking it. And like I said before, I think that smell is a big part of taste. So that's my favorite experiment. And it's not just about drinking fluids up here because uh, the results of this experiment can be used to maybe develop new um, rocket fuel tanks so that they don't have to use fuel pumps to, to move the fluid or fuel along. They can actually just use the shape of the, of the, uh, the fuel tank itself to push the, fu the fuel where it needs to go. Thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, question. Hello, my name is Anya Reed, and my question is, have you needed to treat any medical emergencies of the crew yet? Thanks, Anya. Yeah, so my background, I'm a physician. I'm an emergency medicine doctor, and I'm very, very thankful that I haven't had to use any of those skills yet. Um, everybody is very healthy, and when we are selecting astronauts and training them, we try to make sure that they are and as good as health possible because we really don't want to have any medical emergencies when we get to the space station. Thanks for that question. My name is Jackson Singleton. I am nine years old. My question is, is there any difference in how you treat people in space when, when they are sick or injured? That's a, that's a great question. Um, for the most part, there aren't a lot of differences, but there are some very, uh, you know, grav the, the absence of gravity provides some, um, some different changes to our body that we need to be aware of. And then uh, when we're doing things like CPR, you know, you use gravity to do CPR. And uh, so here we might put our feet, we actually have our medical treatment uh, bed right here. I don't know if you can see this. And so if I were to do CPR on somebody in space, I'd probably flip upside down and push with my legs. Um, and I read your question about bleeding in space. And uh, instead of falling down to the floor, if you were bleeding, it would just kind of create a little bu bubble of blood on your skin. You treat it the same way. And that's apply direct pressure or uh, put a good bandage on there. Um, so that, that, all, that type of treatment stays the same. That's a great question. Thank you. Hi, Uncle Cho. This is Brooklyn. And thank you so much for sending Mrs. Redding that birthday message. It made her day. Hi. You hey, know my hey name Brooke, it's now. great to hear from you. Uh, you know my name, and uh, what I was wondering what you were going to send Kai for his birthday. And can you re can you repeat that question? Did Sorry. You hear? 
I was wondering if uh, you would send Kai for his birthday. Did you hear her, Chell? She wants to know I what you're going to send Kai. No, I'm sorry. What are you going to send Kai for his oh, birthday? Oh, I'm going to send Kai on his birthday. Well, I have our, I'll send him a birthday message, of course, but I've already uh, bought a present for him, and it's um, and and uh, Aunt Christie's going to wrap it for him. Good. Well, we're enjoying your reunion for you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for representing. Yes, we love you. Love you guys too. Thank you so much for uh, coming today. So, Chell, this is Ruth again. I think we're about out of time, but I just wanted to give you a couple of minutes to um, wrap up. There were some kids who didn't get to ask you their questions, so we told them that you would be in touch with them later, and we'll make sure and tell you who those kids were. But I just wanted to give you a couple minutes to say whatever you wanted to say. And before I do that, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate you um, spending time with us today. It's been an amazing adventure. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. I, yeah, I know we're running out of time, and for the those kids that didn't get to to send up a message, um, I I will have your answers, and I will get those answers to you. Uh, so don't worry. Thank you again so much for letting me um, crash the the class meeting. Uh, I really wish I could be there uh, with you all to celebrate our 20th reunion, but uh, I guess this is a pretty good excuse to to miss it. Um, thank you again for. Um, for letting, for letting me be a part of this, and I hope you guys have a, a terrific weekend. Thank you, Bye. 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 All right. Yay. Yay. Mr. Backflip. Cool. Bye, Chell. Thank you.